Have you ever heard of a hot sand battery? Neither had I until today, but frankly, they're actually very impressive and they currently work and they currently are in operation. Who would have thought, right? Hello my friends and welcome to the channel, I'm the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans and I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. It's 1am on a Monday morning, but you need to know what's going on around the world. On this channel here, we try to make sure you're up to date on battery technology that is relevant. There's lots I don't report on here because it's irrelevant. It's nonsensical clickbait. It's stuff where people are saying, oh, we're doing this amazing stuff. But by the way, we don't have any facts, we don't have any papers, but we're doing it, trust us, trust us. Well, yeah, here on this channel, I like to talk about real things made by real companies, by real people, with real evidence and real proof. And this is one of those things. Now, Electric reports that Finnish startup Polar Night Energy and local Finnish utility Vata Jankowski have together built the world's first commercial sand-based high temperature heat storage system that can be powered by solar and wind. Confused? So was I when I first started reading about it. Let's try and break this down in a simple way. This is a sand filled energy storage device in Finland. The sand gets hot and becomes a battery. Basically, Polar Night Energy's heat storage system is a 23 foot tall steel container filled with 100 tons of sand. Polar Night Energy uses the lowest grade of sand that isn't used in construction. Hot air blown through pipes heats the sand in the steel container by resistive heating. The sand is able to store heat at around 500 to 600 Celsius. That's exceptionally hot. And that's 932 to 1112 Fahrenheit. It can store that at that energy for months. So power generated in the summer can be used to heat homes in the winter. Polar Night Energy says it has 100 kilowatt of heating power and eight megawatt hours of energy capacity. Now you can see in this graphic that this is how it's meant to work with renewables. And I think frankly, it makes a lot of sense. In fact, it might be the world's cheapest battery. If you can find a cheaper one, let me know. Email me, put the comment in this comments below, join our Facebook group and let us all know. Now the first sand battery, which in the town of Kankanpa, I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correctly. I'm sorry, Finnish people, is connected directly to the grid and runs when the electricity is cheapest. That's usually when renewables are powering it. And it's also next to a data center, which produces waste heat that is pumped into the sand battery. In the future, the energy storage silo can and should be directly connected to wind or solar sources of power. So when there's more energy coming from these renewable sources, such as solar, you know, there's more sun than people need, more wind than they need, they can just put them into this battery, heat this sand up to an insanely hot temperature and keep it there where it sits and stays hot until you need it. When energy prices are higher, the sand storage system discharges heat that warms water for Vatas Jankowski's district heating system. The water is then pumped around homes, offices, and the town's swimming pool. Polar Night Energy's CTO, Marku Yonan, said, This innovation is a part of the smart and green energy transition. Heat storage can significantly help to increase the presence of renewables in the electrical grid. At the same time, we can prime the waste heat to usable levels to heat a city. This is a logical step forward towards combustion-free heat production. Now, I thought I should mention this. I, at my house have a swimming pool, which I don't use. It's massive. It's enormous. It's 3.5 meters deep at one end. And it's very, it's 18 meters long. To heat the thing, it costs so much money. So I don't do it. But this could be a solution, right? If I just had a huge silo of sand or just a decent sized silo of sand, and when, right, when I have more solar coming through into my power system than I need, maybe I could use that energy to heat the sand up then, right, when I want hot water for the pool, run hot water through that sand, therefore heating the pool. Now, if that sand can stay hot for six months or more, that means I'm not gonna lose any power. This could be a really efficient system because obviously the whole idea of having solar piping on your roof in order to heat your pool, right? You have pipes on your roof and then the sun will heat those pipes and the water goes into the pool. That works really well when you have sun, not so well when you don't, but this could work in both scenarios. Anyhow, little side idea there for those of you that have a pool and that spend a lot of money to heat it. 
Now, the US National Renewable Energy Laboratory is investigating sand's potential for energy storage. But the Finns, well, they got there first. Polonite Energy is in talks with the other local utilities and is planning to raise more funding to expand this project. Now, there is an Italian company called Energy Dome who've begun to commercialize the world's first CO2 battery, which was launched last month in Sardinia in Italy. The battery uses carbon dioxide to store renewable energy on the grid. And Energy Dome says that the technology can be quickly deployed anywhere in the world. Now, I'll put a link below to that video about the world's first CO2 battery and about some other videos about the most interesting batteries that I've seen all around the world. Those include iron flow batteries and even sodium batteries, which I believe are the most likely battery to change the world as we know it today. Now, to be fair, while it's being called a sand battery, it's really more of a heat sink. It's kind of confusing to think of it as a sand battery, but really the real way to look at it is it's a heat sink where energy can be stored efficiently and cheaply. Specifically, it's actually a heat battery or a thermal battery. Now, to be honest, if you look at the efficiency of this system, it's not really all that high. I personally can't see it being likely to be commercially viable all around the world, except in places where maybe there's a lot of sand sitting around that um, nobody needs. And you know what? Those are the places where this actually could work. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you think this has worked? Is it a winner or is it a big no? Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And don't forget to click that icon notification bell so you get notified of all of our videos.